2K20 released a few days ago and the hype was insane. We were all excited for the new installment in the series to tie us over to the next gen consoles. 2K promised a lot of things that they didn't follow through on which has caused a lot of backlash in the community. Grab some popcorn, get comfortable, because this video we are going on a ride. People are talking about lowering VC prices. Um, remember guys that like, uh, Cash and I talked about this earlier, you can respec all your builds, so like if you don't want to build 17 my players, you don't have to, you can respec them. So that, that'll save you VC right there. Uh, people like jump to conclusions on what they saw in terms of the neighborhood in this trailer um that's not the neighborhood but you guys can think whatever you want um I've i like that so many times i believe you can respect as many times as you want i don't think we're we're um all right where do i even start well, first off, I like to say the majority of what I say in this video is going to be my opinion, even though a lot of people are going to agree with me. I know there's going to be some people in the comments disagreeing with me, and that's perfectly fine. I'm not trying to attack anybody personally. Also, I'm mainly a park player, so I'm going to be speaking mainly on my park in my career, although I had heard some good and bad things about my team. For the most part, they seem to be enjoying the game mode besides some pretty bad bugs like the out of position stuff and things like that. So let's talk about park. Let's start with the lies from the number one promoter in the company, Ronnie2k. Now this guy, I know he's not a developer, but he is the promoter for 2K. He's the one who gets all the celebrities on board, all the athletes on board, and so on. Now he's known for his awful reputation in the community. This guy has been false advertising 2K for years, and no one's really said anything about it. I mean they have, but it takes me back to when I can remember where it was NBA 2K17, where he talked about underwater parks and Yeezys, which were never false through on as a community we kind of let that slide but this year this year is just absolutely unacceptable like it's disgusting and it's insulting and it's beyond frustrating if i didn't care about monetization on this video i would have worded that a lot differently this year is just straight up pathetic when I first saw the park being streamed on Twitch prematurely, I was actually blown away with how nothing was done. I'm not joking, I actually thought I was watching 2K19 and it was clickbait. It's literally the exact same thing we saw last year. The same 3v3 courts, the same 2v2 courts, the same my court, the same stage, the same everything minus a few additions. Now, I know this is where a lot of people are going to have their different opinions, but seeing the same visuals for two years in a row is not exciting at all, especially being a content creator and it being your job, so you're basically forced to play the game. Now, I want to put this into perspective for you because I feel like a lot of Park and just 2K content creators in general can really relate to this. Playing a game that's basically the exact same for two years in a row and not really enjoying it kind of takes away the pleasure from actually streaming and, you know, content creation in general. But it's your job, so you kind of have to do it. Now, sure, I'll brush the visuals away for a sec for good gameplay, because at the end of the day, that's kind of all we wanted. I know it's early, but as of right now, the gameplay isn't really that good. They absolutely kill dribbling and the game feels extremely slow. I have never played a game of 2K where Park takes this long. Sure, blaming on having no badges or whatever, but people missing wide open shots with 80-90 ratings should not happen this often. And don't even get me started on the quick draw badge because that shouldn't even be a thing in the first place. Let's not talk about the bugs and the glitches day one. My team glitches, endless park glitches, blue screening when bringing up your phone, blue screening when looking at your VIP stats, basically just blue screening while you're playing the game, not getting progress when completing games, park games not starting, and the servers. Oh man the servers. How many years does a billion dollar company need to prepare your servers for people being on them? You know it's going to happen, and it's been happening for years. I just don't understand. Now, with all of these issues, you think the community leaders would be letting people know what's happening. Well, wrong. Here, check this out. I tweeted at LD telling him that the game was broken, and instead of addressing my original tweet, 
he replied to a criticism tweet instead. Now, don't get me wrong, I like LD, he seems like a great dude, but completely ignoring my original tweet and replying to a tweet that has really nothing to do with that is a little strange considering the game is broken at the moment and has been since day one. The main person I want to talk about is Ronnie2k. As mentioned earlier, this guy has a pretty bad reputation to most people in the community, and there is a reason why. Not just the fact that he flexes meeting celebrities every chance he gets, he is just straight up false advertising a product, which is 2K and especially NBA 2K20. Like literally, I'm pretty sure this is illegal or something like that. Let's talk about some things he lied about this year. Here, watch this clip and I want you to hear the cockiness in his voice when he talks about the neighborhood trailer. Uh, people like jump to conclusions on what they saw in terms of the neighborhood in this trailer. Um, that's not the neighborhood, but you guys can think whatever you want. Um, yeah, Ronnie, we thought what we thought because it was literally in the trailer. The trailer that you guys promoted for the neighborhood that made it look a lot more intriguing than it actually was. Now I know there is going to be seasonal changes and stuff like that, but this was absolutely disappointed. And then we get the game and it was the exact same thing. Do you not see how that would be an issue to someone who's spending a minimum of $60 on the game and then another $40 to $60 to upgrade your guy and actually make him somewhat competitive at the neighborhood or the park? It's just completely unacceptable. We could talk about multiple other things like the pie charts, how they said there was going to be more then when the game released, but once again, that was a lie. But I want to show you guys something that is going to absolutely blow your mind. Do you guys remember the whole respecting your my player thing? The thing Ronnie described as being a VC saver? Well, that was literally just made up. Here, watch this clip and then I'll explain. People are talking about lowering VC prices. Um, remember guys that like, uh, Cash and I talked about this earlier, you can respec all your builds. So like, if you don't want to build 17 my players, you don't have to, you can respec them. So I hope you're ready to be extremely triggered because when I found this out, I was too. Baluba, aka Mike Wang, was an annoying TV's chat and wrote this. He confirmed that he had no idea where that came from, meaning Ronnie completely made that up because Mike Wang is literally a game developer who works on the game. Therefore, he would know more than Ronnie on what's actually going on with the game. So that tells me one of two things. One, Ronnie is completely out of touch with what actually goes on with the game and has no communication with other parts of the company, which is terrible considering he's the main promoter for the game. Or two, he is literally being paid to lie about the game for promoting purposes. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised because this is the same dude who puts his chat in the sub mode for free my team card giveaways, which isn't free by the way because you have to be a Twitch sub, which costs you money. Regardless, this is actually pathetic and no other video game company would get away with something like this. So how does 2K? Well, I'll explain it in the best way I can and it's pretty simple. There's no other basketball game for us to play. NBA Live didn't even release a game this year, and even if it did, we wouldn't play it. NBA Live's just not really there yet. If it was, trust me, I would be playing it too, and I hope you guys would too. The fact that Ronnie has a good paying job promoting false information to consumers is honestly sad. I can't even imagine the younger kids who get fooled by this. Me being a grown man, and some of you guys being of age to realize this, we can at least tell right from wrong and we are just blatantly being taken advantage of. All in all, I think this is the lowest 2K has ever gone, and I didn't even cover half the things that Ronnie and 2K have done over the years. Now, I know we're basically going to play the game anyways, because let's face it, there's no other basketball game that exists, so we're kind of stuck with 2K. That's the thing that sucks, we are very passionate basketball fans, and 2K is a monopoly, meaning there's no competition. I just hope this video opened your eyes to the stuff 2K has done and will continue to do in the future. 
I have talked to endless amounts of people about this game, and I think out of the 300 I've talked to, two people have said they actually enjoyed this game. Regardless, that's going to bring the video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. If you guys are sick and tired of 2K and their antics, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comments section below. Once again, guys, thank you so much for the support. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time, and peace!